So what is this journey? I'm just going to pass the mic. What has this journey been for you? Because it seems like, you know, Jesus said, I'm calling you out of the world. He wasn't really calling us geographically out of the world. He was calling us just to leave behind this ego belief system of limit and lack and scarcity and conflict and competition and be literally lifted up to into the spiritual realm in our thinking so that we could live that attitude and, and demonstrate that. And so, you want to share a little bit about your experience of coming and joining with me and with us and in this deep purpose. Yeah. Well, it's been a, a huge experience um, and a huge undoing that started maybe five years ago, I think, <laughs> when I had a prayer in my mind of um, changing my thought system. I had a prayer of um, the course of my reversing the whole thought system and that's how it started and a few months after that I met David it was like what well, the spirit guided me to check on the internet and look for of course Mercus things in Sweden and I had quite a strong resistance to, to doing that first because I had been in Christian groups and I had left groups behind and I was not attracted to that but I was feeling something calling me to check it out and and David's face showed up in Sweden on the Swedish website and it said David Hofmeister is coming and and that was kind of my first big feeling of being guided because it was very strong and and maybe some of you have felt it too like go there you know go and listen to that guy and that's how it was and um, it was a very powerful experience uh, it, Partly because I asked him some questions about, I had some ideas in my mind about, it was a lot about the environment and food and, you know, about killing animals and stuff. But one question was, okay, I've driven like two hours to get here and I feel like I'm, you know, um, bringing the pollution, like increasing the pollution in the environment when I use my car. And, and how does that work, you know, because I had also read the course and about illusions and everything, and David kind of released me from the idea that I could could do that, you know, that I could destroy something, and, and something was, like, I was so free in my mind when I, when I heard that, and so happy, I was, like, remembering how it said in the Bible when someone had met Jesus, they just ran off, ran out on the streets and just shouted how free they felt, you know, and that's how I felt. And I also felt a strong call to go and be with David and join with David and the messengers in the United States. And, but uh, I had strong, limited beliefs in my mind uh, that I was limited, so I kind of felt like that was something impossible, so I actually forgot about it for months <laughs> uh, until the Holy Spirit made this, made it happen because my prayer was very strong so even if it was you know even unconscious <laughs> i had forgot about that it was possible because i had so many i had you know even a death and i had a uh, family and so many things there in sweden that seemed like holding me there you know how it is to have your life <laughs> basically <laughs> with everything that is going on. So I, I didn't know how it was going to work out, but uh, it did work out with, with um, uh, actually an organization called Transcendental Meditation. They said, oh, we're going to pay room and board for you and just come over. And that's how I came over and, and the Holy Spirit kind of had me there for three weeks, but I said, no, this is not where you're going to be. You're going to be in the Peace House in Cincinnati. And, and uh, yeah, that's that was the start <laughs> of this transformation um, from the personal perspective, like from being a personal individual that had to take care of my life to becoming truly helpful, becoming like 
a channel for the Holy Spirit that is like unselfish and not interested in in the personal growth or personal perspective. And for those of us who say the Course, you know, the Course is saying, seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. It's calling us to change our perception of the world. So, I think for a lot of people, when they think of a life of service and devotion, it could be, you know, serving the poor or trying to help end, you know, nuclear proliferation or stop world hunger or, you know, make a dent in the world in terms of the world's problems, but but your life turned out very, very different than that. You're going more for a state of mind salvation instead of trying to save souls or convert people to a particular religion or denomination. It's just state of mind, but maybe you could just give an example of like a, a day in your life. I know there's no real pattern or ritual to it, but uh, what are some of the kind of things that you use as backdrops for your mind training as you're going for purity of heart? Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. <coughs> yeah, it's no typical, typical day or typical task or anything, but um, I have been given the task of um, and making material and resources available like David's teachings, um, I felt the calling to to help out, to make it into book form, um, DVDs and CDs, and um, you have probably seen him on the web, uh, YouTube and everything, but I've, I'm called to help out with the hard copy materials, and, and that is, yeah, that's part of my daily tasks that the Holy Spirit is guiding me to do sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's other things and joining with with people, phone calls or when we have retreats it's a lot of deep healing interactions uh, going on. Um, yeah. yeah. I always say counseling too, it's I think when we look at this isn't counseling at improving the personality self. It's really, it's a really counseling towards dismantling the world as you know it. Everything that you perceive, everything that you think you've ever known, comes into question, and it starts to be like a, like a giant melt melting away. Or sometimes people have meltdowns, and uh, when the ego feels like it's very threatened, it can feel like like the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz melting, uh, melting down to just a cap and gown, but I'm thinking of a friend of ours right now who's from Norway, KJ we call him, Shatan, from Norway, and um, he's there in, in Utah and, and going through, in service, a lot of uh, meltdowns of his self-concept and so forth, but I'm reminded that um, he works on a, an oil rig on, in the sea off of Norway with a bunch of guys out there who aren't very expressive with their feelings, <laughs> with a bunch of macho guys on an oil rig out in the sea. And and he was talking about coming. I've met him sometimes over in, over in Spain and Norway and actually down in Australia, but maybe you can describe it a bit. He, I know he started calling in at one point when he was planning to come. Most people have a lot of hurdles. <coughs> it could be family hurdles, financial hurdles, typical hurdles that, that keep people from really questioning very deeply what they believe in. And, and basically you kind of talked with him on the phone or Skype a number of times and maybe you can describe how that went back and forth because he's, he's beaming and glowing right now but it was quite a, a stepping process. Yeah, uh, KJ, he felt, he felt the call to come to the monastery a while back, and, uh, and I was in contact with him a lot on Skype, and he was like, you know, very um, enthusiastic and had lots of questions. And then um, at one point, it got quiet. Uh, we had planned 
he had planned to come uh, in the beginning of May, I think, and this was maybe in April, and, and he suddenly stopped communicating, and I was like, I noticed that, and I was like, okay, listening, waiting to see, you know, was there a prompt to contact him, or, and then one day, cause sometimes when prompts come in, or guidance, or, you know, the Holy Spirit's voice, it's you know, for me, when I'm still learning it, it's like, sometimes I don't really know what's going on. It was this strong energy that day, and I was like, hmm, what is it? What do you want? Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and I didn't know, and not even when I went on my computer and went on Skype, I didn't really know. But then I saw KJ uh, was online, and, and I knew I was supposed to call him, so I called him, and, and he was like, feel this. I don't feel to come. You know, I feel I am I'm resistant. He actually said he's very open and very honest with with uh, his thoughts. So he said I am actually resistant, and he said I'm actually watching a movie because I started to talk to him, you know, and encourage him and speak what the spirit said. And he said, I'm actually watching a movie called Tron. I think. And right at the moment when I called him, and he laughed because maybe you've seen the movie, it's about how someone is caught in a computer game, I think, and, and someone else is actually saving, seemingly, you know, helping this person out of this game, this, <laughs> this unreal world. <laughs> so that was right when I called him, and he, he started to laugh because he said, okay, I see this sign, <laughs> it was quite apparent. So uh, after that, he 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 saw it. You know, it's you. You only need to see it. You only need to see your resistance and be willing to let go. And that was what he was. So he he started to communicate again. He said, "I want to come. I, I feel this. You know, I feel this is really God's calling." So, and the the mind is so scared um, to wake up because you know the ego, the mind wants to be in this familiar. Thing uh, that it knows, so this resistance is very common actually when you start to have this willingness to wake up. Because it's scary, <laughs> it's really scary in the beginning. But you have mighty, mighty companions <laughs> and angels with you. I actually had angels uh, coming to me um, when I decided to take the step to to travel from Sweden to here. Um, so it was uh, very, very much resistance for me too, and it was playing out in my family around me. They were very, they tried to hold me back, to have me stay there uh, so much so that I, I gave up the idea of going. I was saying to God, okay, I know you want me to do this, but you have not told me why, and I don't know. You know, so I, okay, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm not going because I can't. Because my parents are saying no, and everyone is saying no. And so I kind of gave up the idea, but but uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, my calling <laughs> in my heart was so strong, and the Holy Spirit was um, knew it. So so that day when I said no, um, something happened and, and those huge light beings came to me, which were my parents' higher selves. And they were so beautiful and they were so loving. They were just light um, and they they were just that present and my mind joined with their minds and and I was asking questions, all the questions that I had ever had. You know, and they were answering, it was like a flow, it was like I saw them with vision, with my inner vision, which was much more real than perception, and, and all the answers were given, and at the end, you know, when I had received all the answers, they said, okay, now we're, tell we're going to tell you why we're here, and we're telling you that we're so grateful that you're going to go on this journey. So that's all I needed to hear to be able to fulfill the plan of of uh, going to join with David and and the messengers. 
Um, my parents were still fearful. Uh, when I met them the next day, they were very fearful, but I was not. I was so certain, so I could could help them. I could pray with them. So they were Christians, and it's very um, comforting for them to sit down and pray together. And that's what we did. So I think too. For a lot of people on the spiritual journey, it's it's like you feel a bit like the black sheep in the family. Uh, like you've got this vibrational connection and you've got this huge calling. And sometimes with your family, they may or may not be able to even relate to it. And I think with a lot of the messengers, that's, that's really the case. Um, um, Kirsten actually, her, her mother came along uh, on the journey so it's kind of a rare, rare, rare mother-daughter <laughs> diving into the depths of, uh, of this calling together. Uh, but that's, in my travels around the world, I do find father-son and mother-daughter combinations. I even have uh, three friends in the Canary Islands of Spain where it's, uh, it's grandma and her daughter and two granddaughters that are all deeply into this. So it's kind of fun now to see the configurations, but those are still pretty rare. But um, to give you an example of this, um, uh, Jenny and I have a friend, Sven, over in, um, he's in Ireland now, but he was in Sweden, but uh, he'd worked in astrology, and so I remember one time Jenny said, oh, I went to Sven, Sven said, I've got to give you an, your astrological reading. So when she did get this reading from Sven, basically the reading was, you will fail at everything that you attempt in this world, in this lifetime, except God. And I thought, what a beautiful reading. <laughs> Imagine going into an astrologer, you will fail at everything. <laughs> no private thoughts and no people pleasing. But in one sense, that's kind of like when you start to really see where the course is going, that it's not about trying to compromise with the world, it's not about trying to find a middle ground with the world, it's really about going for purification and letting the Holy Spirit use all your skills and abilities that the ego made and developed, including the language. There's no words in heaven. The course tells us words are but symbols of symbols twice removed from reality. The ego made all this up, but the spirit can use it in, in a most profound, mm -hmm. most glorious way. And that's what we find when we talk about living a life of service and devotion. It's about really being happy, truly, authentically happy, without trying to please anybody, act for approval, fit into society. Uh, you're, not, you're not the conformist, but you're not the rebel. Uh, you know, the middle way that uh, that Buddha talked about is really the miracle that Jesus talks about, where you are, let it just flow through you, and in one sense that's the way that it's gone with your life. Nowadays it's, it's these counseling sessions and talking with people in ways that seem to be deeply impactful in their life. Uh, I think of KJ now, over at the expression sessions, is this big, hulky man who cries and pours his heart out and just shares so openly whatever he's experiencing because he doesn't want to hide and protect anything. He wants to have that thorough, complete transformation of mind. And you had a big part with the Holy Spirit in connecting with him and just being that, that strength and that support for him to take those steps. And uh, I know his relationship with his mother is transformed. She's actually coming uh, next month to the monastery as well from Norway. Uh, his relationships, he has a series of relationships with women, and he was able to see these egoic attempts of what he was trying to do to control the situation, to manipulate things. And now he's been given another relationship uh, with an, another woman who's worked with me, Carrie, for many, many years. And it's, it's very devoted towards enlightenment. 
which uh, typically in, in this world when you get involved in relationships, it's not always about enlightenment. It could be about a lot of other things. So it's just taken a turn in a, in a most glorious way and uh, it just feels good to be a part of that. I'll pass the microphone if anybody's got any questions for Jenny. She's right here. <laughs> so when, when did you leave uh, Sweden? I think it was five, five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Did you go through any kind of sense of loss at all with the, the, the process of the transition? Um, I went through a lot of guilt, yeah. A lot, because it was kind of symbolic of letting go of, of the ego and leaving so much behind, seemingly, and, and even the sun, actually. Um, so the first period of time I was feeling huge guilt mm. and questioning God, questioning how can you call me away from my son, you know, it seems so cruel. Um, so I was through huge, because the only thing I felt like I had, except from from David and, and the Mighty Companions, was the teaching of the Course, which, which was very much just ideas for me. The idea that no one is outside of you, and I kind of clung to those ideas. I kind of practiced them so much uh, that I started to experience them. But I, at first I did not experience them. I just, okay, God, you say that my son is not outside of me, and no one can be um, separated, no one can be left behind, no one can be hurt. If I feel hurt, I have a wrong idea. So I had to intensely work with the ideas. I kind of had set up the situation, you know, to, to work that way. But, um, and I even went back to Sweden and uh, joined with my son and my parents and people there for a while. And kind of tried it out and was in a, in a period of confusion for a while. Um, and, uh, so. But now it looks like, like, yeah. My son is living his happy life. <laughs> and I don't have a lot of contact, but I have some contact with him. And, um, and I practice to do it as, as guided. I have a question. I'm Lauren. I have a question for both of you. How I'm struggling with letting go, letting God, and how, how do you... When I think and I feel that Spirit's guiding me, I and mean, I'm hitting walls after walls, and now I'm just stuck. I'm even afraid to do anything, even if I feel out of love. So how do you, both of you, how do you know the difference between Spirit's guiding you? And the, how do you know? I mean, do you practice. <laughs> practice. So you, is the ego play tricks and you think... Like, yeah, you need to try. You need to try and you need to trust. But I keep failing. I mean, to me, that the ego says they're failures. And I keep thinking, okay, Spirit, maybe you want me to learn a lesson. So, okay, what's the lesson? Okay, I have no idea. It's just like I keep being, I, I, I'm just so confused now that even when I sit with myself, and even when I feel it's out of love, the fear sits in. Oh, I'm getting emotional so much. I'm just so stuck and I don't know how to let go anymore. But before, I was always so spontaneous and I would just do it. It was like, I was, felt I was always so free and I would just do things. And then all of a sudden, I'm just so stuck and I don't, even when I think this is the right way, I hit wall after wall. And so I just feel so confused and I don't know. It's just so, ugh. so I just want examples of at the beginning or now, how do you let go of my God? How do you? <laughs> All I can say is just, you know, you just continue. You need to just continue. Even the walls, I mean. Yeah, and it's not the spirit that is testing you. It is the beliefs in the mind and they are very many, many, many layers. So even though you may think it's from spirit, it's still ego, then how the heck do you know? It's 
it's not really. Uh, do you want to speak? Or? Yeah, I think it seems like everyone who, who goes on this path goes through a, a disillusionment. A, a really a deep disillusionment too, like a like a roto rooter, gut wrenching kind of thing. And I, you know, years ago when I would read the lives of the mystics and saints, and you know, Saint John of the Cross, Dark Night of the Soul. Yeah, you, know, you read through one after the next. Okay, Dark Night, Dark Night, Dark Night, Dark Night. Ooh, I don't know if that looks so appealing. <laughs> you know, if that's coming. Um, but I would say that that that's very much a big part of it, that, that actually before the authentic spiritual journey really sparks and really takes hold, and like the tractor beam, you get caught in the tractor beam, like beam me up, there's, a, there's a definitely a period of, of disillusionment. And people who work with the Course, they can have a lot of miraculous experiences, almost like leading them in, and then all of a sudden the wheels fall off. And they think, what if, where, where did I take a wrong turn, or what did I do wrong? You know, I was so confident before, and now I, you know, like a bowl of jello. It's just, you know, it just seems like you're going down the rabbit hole, and you're having trouble even grabbing on, hold on to a branch or something. You know, it's just taking you down. So, in my case, it was it was years of of tears and and disillusionment. Um, just some depression, there was periods of rage, a lot of things that came up. And I'd say nowadays, having gone through all that and kind of come through the keyhole on the other side, it seems like the ones that come, that I work with, like Jenny, for example, and the messengers, go through the same experiences, only much shorter time frame. You know, where mine seemed to take decades you know, it's much more compressed. And also there's a part in the Course where it says, you will not go on alone from here. Mighty companions travel with you. You know, when you really have that desire, you start just, just it could be as simple as coming to a gathering like this, starting to link up with those who have gone through it. The support starts to kind of come shooting through in beams, even though it seems crazy and it seems like you're having a lot of trouble discerning what's coming from the Spirit, it's like the call of your heart is like, help me get through this, you know, help me pierce through the darkness and come through into the light. And I just find more and more is that those, those symbols of help just come flooding in from all over the place. Uh, my job has been, having gone through the experience, is work with those that come to me in a very close, intimate way of, of coming through to this piercing experience as fast as possible. Also, developing tools that, that are very helpful, usually a lot of them on the internet, that are really profound tools, like uh, we ended up uh, a collaboration of, of a group of us with the teachings and, and the Spirit pouring through them, started developing very audio-visual Kind of engaging tools that that are that are not just reading the book or just doing the lessons, but it actually takes it more into a very engaging way. We develop a program called Mystical Mind Training that people have had wonderful experiences with. But those, that's just one example of of all these different ways uh, that that make the journey uh, seem to go much faster and also be more engaging, so you can really engage with it. Like one booklet that came through was called Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment. <laughs> Everywhere I've gone in the world, people love the movies. They, they actually learn English through watching movies in South America and different countries in Europe and so forth, because they love Hollywood, they love the movies. So the Spirit just gave me, this is like a pathway for maybe you're tired of meditating. And you're tired of organized religion. You're tired of science. You're, t you're burned out on a lot of things, but you do like to watch movies. And you like popcorn. <laughs> and you're like saying to the Holy Spirit, okay, work with me. I like popcorn, 
soda pop, and movies. Can you can you deal with this? And the spirit's like, yeah, I can. We can work with that. The spirit will work with anything. And so that's what's been very helpful. And a lot of these uh, movie clips and have been incorporated into this mystical mind training program. And I think that's the most important thing to know that the prayer of the heart for healing, for love, for wholeness is answered. And it comes in a way that we can handle. And that's what makes it, it really work. It, w it wouldn't help us if, if it came in a way that we couldn't relate to it. So, so I would say don't be discouraged when you begin to go through this. The walls start to come up, the doors start to close. You know, when those doors close, there's a purpose behind that. And there's new doors, you know, new opportunities that will open up. The people you will meet, the, the mechanisms that will come into your life, the symbols will be very, very profound. And it's a quickening happening now, and it's very encouraging. Very encouraging. Yeah, I just opened the movie watcher's guide and I can read about the horse whisperer. It's a classic movie for true empathy. Quiet inner strength comes with integrity. Patience, patience, gentleness, and tranquility transcend the busy distractions and fast pace of the world. With inner strength, one can smile at the script, for no outcome can be fearful. And in the end, there are no goodbyes, for we are one self. The smile on the rancher's face at the end of the movie reflects the essence of true inner strength. The wise accept things as they are and do not wish they were different. So that's an example of the movie that the movie watchers get includes. Yeah. We could say the way that people use this is they everybody who's going through this awakening knows they have issues. Uh, how they're going to get the answers to that, they're just praying for some help. And oftentimes when people are working with that, they will go through the guide and they will just be skimming through and they will notice that there's a piece in there that's dealing with their main issues. And then they look at the title of the movie, then they go out to the, the video place, they rent the DVD or they download it from Netflix or whatever, and they have a, a healing experience with that movie. But it's not, it doesn't seem so haphazard and random when they actually can read about their issues and go, ah, those are my issues, and then have a movie that comes through. I was going to share, uh, before you started talking about the movies, about my introduction to spirit, my awakening. And it was, I would say, violent because of my approach to it. And then you began talking about the movies, and that's what I do. Now, my awakening was a, some years ago, but you are the first one to talk about that openly, that I've been aware, and the message is that spirit will use whatever, the deer walking by, or a movie, or a song, or in my case, that abruptness, because that's what I needed at the time. So thank you. It is, it is very true. My introduction, so we're not alone, is I was so aggravated hitting the walls that I, one evening, I basically yelled at God and I said, F you and everything you've ever created. And I said it with conviction, crying, with all the sincerity that I had, and I got a response. And there began my journey. So, fear God, goodness, oh my gosh, no. That's when I got the embrace. Because I was so sincere that it broke through. So it can appear in any way. In a movie, in a song, with a person, in a sense, however, wherever. 
it'll happen. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Just had a thought before you shared about how symbols are used. Like how I felt when I start to practice that nothing is, is outside my mind. How many symbols, you know, come that give me messages or, you know, tell me we're joined, this is it, you know, you're on the right track or and even in the movies, you know, everywhere. It's really beautiful.